Hey, badass business owner, today I want to talk about taxes. What if I told you that one of the top reasons that small businesses go out of business is due to them not paying their taxes? And I'm going to bet for many of you, you learned this lesson the hard way. I know I did. With so many small business owners coming out of a traditional job setting where their taxes are taken out of their paycheck every week, it just doesn't dawn on them that they need to save some of the money they are making in their business in order to pay their taxes not just your federal taxes either. You're going to have self-employment tax as well as state tax depending upon the state that you live in. And depending upon how much money you make, that could be as low as 10% or as high as 30%. Now we can sit here and debate how you don't want to pay your taxes, but the reality is you need to pay your taxes, especially if you want to stay in business. So let's take a few minutes and go over some key things that you need to know as a small business owner and your taxes. Now, before I get in too deep, I need to do a disclaimer. I am not a tax professional, nor am I a CPA, and I am just sharing with you the things that I've learned the hard way, as well as what I've learned from other small business owners. Your tax situation is unique to you, and since everybody has a different situation, I highly encourage you to sit down and speak with a tax professional in your area to go over your specific situation. But hopefully by the end of this video, you'll at least have some good questions that you can ask and some basic understandings of what you can prepare for. Now, the first thing that you want to keep in mind is that you are taxed on the profits of the business, but you will also be taxed on any money that you take out of the business, either as an employee of the business or as the business owner. Think of it this way. If the business does $1,000 in sales and your cost of goods, not counting your personal labor, comes to $300 and your expenses ran $200, that leaves you with $500 in potential profit to be taxed. Now keep in mind, there might be other deductions your tax professional can use, like mileage, depreciation, just to name a few. But for our example, we're going to focus on this initial $500 and pretend there's nothing else. More than likely, you spent this $500 on you personally, you paid yourself some money, you might have moved some over to a business savings account for future growth, but whatever the case, you still owe taxes on that full amount. So it's important that you keep this in mind. Part of that $500 also needs to be set aside to pay your taxes. How much you pay in taxes will be determined by a lot of factors, and this is where the CPA or tax specialist comes in. However, you still need to have a plan, as you will not know that full amount until tax time. Now keep in mind, the IRS is going to want you to make a profit in your business. Otherwise, they just consider it a hobby. While they understand some businesses might not make a lot of money in the first year or so, they do expect it to start making money relatively quickly. I know you have a passion to build a business, so let's start preparing for your taxes from the get-go. But here's where the hard work comes in on your behalf. There are some things that you need to do to keep yourself out of trouble and to make tax time 10 times easier. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that you have separate bank accounts, one for the business and one for you personally. Please do not intermingle these funds. It only makes tax time 10 times harder than it needs to be. Not to mention it muddies up your monthly profit and loss statements. Now, the second best practice that I highly recommend is that you open up a third bank account that you do not touch at all. This money will be where you put your tax money into each month. By putting your money into this account, it helps create an out of sight, out of mind mentality. I personally even put mine at a completely different bank, so I'm not even tempted by that money. Please note, this is not an emergency fund. You cannot dip into it to buy stuff when you need to. You will end up in a massive pickle by tax time if you do this. This is why I use a different bank, so I'm not even tempted when I'm checking my balances. Now, you've probably have also heard that you need to be paying your quarterly taxes. The government will like their money in a timely manner. So what you want to do is move your money over to the tax account every month and then quarterly just make a payment. They have made this so easy. You just go to the IRS payment page online and you can apply it towards your current year's taxes. I actually just did this the other day. My third quarter taxes were due, so I logged in and I made a payment. Now, it never feels good to see your bank account drop the amount of money that you pay on your quarterly taxes, but it does feel good knowing that you won't have to scramble at tax time to try to find even more money. I messed this up early on. I, like many of you, had a normal paycheck, and I just had not developed a tax savings muscle to set aside money every single month. And trust me, owing the IRS is not fun. Nothing felt better than the day I finally got caught up and I never plan to experience that again. By paying your quarterly taxes, it will help you at tax time, I promise, especially since many of you have your slowest months right before tax time and more than likely you just went through all of your extra cash to keep the business going. When you've already paid most of your taxes, you won't feel the pain of scrambling to find the money to pay an entire year's worth. 
Plus, if you run into any problems, you will only be penalized on the parts you haven't paid yet. So it actually helps you in a couple different ways. Now, don't worry. If you happen to overpay, you're going to get it back. And by the way, if your tax account ends up having extra money at the end of the year, leave it there. This gives you a jump start on the new year. You never know when you're going to have an amazing year and you're going to be happy that you started out with having some money already in that account. It's going to ease the pain because your taxes are going to go up when you have that amazing year. You want to make sure that you're paying your taxes on time. There are heavy penalties for filing late. Yes, you can do an extension usually until October, but keep in mind, you still owe the money back in April. Extending to file doesn't mean you can extend to pay. So don't fall into the trap of thinking the extension will buy you time to find the money. It doesn't work that way. The IRS is going to start those penalties and fines back in April when it was originally due. Now, let's just say you don't have the money. Your tax accountant or professional can go over your options. In some cases, you might qualify for some monthly payments, but please know this is usually a one-time thing, so please do not think you can do it every single year. It just doesn't work that way. They do not let you stack year over year over year. When you start to fall behind, this is a spiral many small business owners wake up and find themselves in, and the next thing you know, the business is failing. It becomes an awful snowball, and the tax debt becomes bigger and bigger for most people, ultimately destroying the business and the spirit of the business owner. Now, for some of you, you have employees, and you need to keep in mind that you will owe taxes on those employees, and your payroll taxes typically are paid quarterly. You need to set aside that money because you need to make those quarterly payments for the payroll taxes as well. This can get a lot of business owners in serious trouble because they end up spending the money that should go towards payroll taxes on other things. And like I said earlier, the government wants their money. The good news is many of you use a payroll service and typically they take this money out for you and they hold it and then they eventually will make the payments for you as well. So please make sure you use this service. It will save you a lot of time and headaches. You will be grateful that you did. Promise you. I even did this just to make sure I didn't muck that piece up. So if you're processing payroll yourself, please be very careful when you're doing this. Also, if you happen to live in a state or an area where you have to collect sales tax for your products or services, please, whatever you do, hand over that money immediately every single month to your local government as you are required to. This was never your money to start with. You never claim it on your P&L. You do not claim it on your taxes. You are just a collection facility for them. You collect it and you hand it over to them every single month. I have watched small business owners spend that money and it was never theirs to begin with. Way too many small business owners end up spending this money and get into serious hot water. It is no different than your buddy handing you their wallet, asking you to hold it, and you'll be back for it later. And I'm going to assume most of you would not take money out of your buddy's wallet. You would end up giving it back to them the way they gave it to you. But since we all know there's a chance that one or two of you would take the money from your buddy, think twice. Trust me, you're going to regret it. Now, some of you might be wondering how much money should you set aside every single month? Well, like I said earlier, all of your taxes vary. So one thing you could do is take the years prior and divide it by 12 to get a monthly payment. You can use it as a gauge, if you will. However, if you're doing a lot more in sales this year, you might want to bump that up because obviously you're going to be ending up owing more taxes more than likely. For some people, this might be 10% and for some of you, it might be 20 or even 25% depending upon your sales and your write-offs. I'd err a little higher if it was me because scrambling for money at tax time is never fun. One more word of caution before I wrap this up. Don't assume that everything on your profit and loss is going to be deductible. Some things aren't. For example, all that food and soda you buy may not be deductible. Not everything can be written off. Let your accountant share with you what can and cannot be written off. Never assume. Plus, like I mentioned above, there are other things that you can deduct that aren't even on your P&L usually. And you don't want to miss out on any of those. This is why you pay the tax professional. A good one will save you more money than you actually end up paying them. So unless you plan to become a tax expert yourself, you should really look into having someone do this for you. So this way you can maximize your deductions legally and pay as little as you can. Please do not become a statistic. Please do not blow up your business and cause it to fail because you don't pay your taxes. Taxes are a necessary evil and it's important that you plan for them. Like I said earlier, go open up that other bank account that you just put that tax money into. This way you always have money set aside to pay your taxes. Make those quarterly payments to lessen your tax burden at tax time. And finally, avoid the penalties that can become very expensive just paying on time. 
I just don't want to see any of you lose your business over something that was totally preventable. Taxes are never fun, but I promise you that owing the government thousands and thousands of dollars is even less fun. Remember, they have unlimited power. They can come after you, take your business, take your home, and take everything. It is not worth fighting with them. You paid them as employee. The only difference is now you have to see that money coming out of your account, and that never feels good.